your season will not pass by you will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit we have a lot of content to share with you so we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you You see, you don't have to be educated to understand spiritual things. That would have been a big disadvantage to those who did not have the opportunity to go to school. Spiritual things are communicated by the spirit. So whether you can speak English or not, whether you are at whatever educational level, it doesn't matter. Once you are in an atmosphere where the spirit of God is permitted, the word has capacity to birth understanding. One more time, I stretch my hands to you and I command that whatever makes the word of God barren and unfruitful. Whatever makes the word of God unfruitful, in the name of Jesus, I take it out of your life. Whatever makes you to doubt the word, whatever poisons your faith so that as the word of God comes you doubt every philosophical imagination every scientific interruption to the quality and the power of the word I command you to live your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ open your mouth and pray one minute the spirit of understanding is upon me lift your voice and pray the spirit of understanding the ability to receive, the ability to comprehend with all the saints, the length, the height, the depth, the width, the ability to comprehend, the ability to comprehend, the capacity to receive spiritual things. Are you praying? This is part of the meeting. This is a year that you must be blessed. It's your year of triumph for you to rise up like the eagle. Pray. Understanding, understanding, understanding. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me yeah. Help me, those are voices I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me His influence is upon you tonight, brothers and sisters Like a hand upon her young Brooding upon your spirit To make a wonder out of your life if you can I want you to pay attention 
to a very deep mystery I want to share with you tonight. Very deep spiritual mystery. Open your eyes, open your spirit. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to me. That's why I will lift up my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're my peace. I'm prophesying someone's miracles again. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will Yeah, 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 yeah. declared that this is our month of wealth I want to share with you the mysteries that are responsible for certain strange occurrences in the lives of men and women please I want you to pay attention tonight I want to teach you the mystery of exemption write it down the mystery of exemption my spirit is overjoyed you see when the holy spirit begins to rejoice through my spirit like this is because prophetically he has seen that the word will be received hallelujah you will receive something tonight i assure you hmm. psalms 50 the mystery of exemption Psalms 50 verse 15 and 6. Mantles have been given to the church. Mantles have been given to the church. Tonight, Mordecai's arising from the gates of the church. For the kings to be born, for the victory to be born. For the mantles to return, for the graces to return. Yeah. Ali Ali O, Ali O, Ali Ali O, yeah. of power arising from this place here tonight for the kings to be born for the mantles to return for revival to return for the power to return hey Chant in the spirit. That's what God is doing already. There will be a mighty baptism of mantles tonight. Believe me, 
Tonight is, is like an initiation into a realm of reality, a realm of possibility. There is such a provision in the kingdom. There is such a provision in the kingdom that men can be exempted. There is such a possibility in the dealings of God with man. Please be seated. Psalms 50, verse 15 and 16. If it's possible for us to have amplified, that's great. Otherwise, no problem. You are immersed in a strong atmosphere of God's glory because of something you will hear. Brothers and sisters, God is not playing games with us. I want us to believe him. Everyone read as I begin my teaching tonight. Just be sensitive to what the spirit of God is doing inside and outside. Those outside, please, I want you to understand that there is no difference as far as the reach of the anointing is concerned. One to read. And call on me in the day of trouble. And I will deliver you. And you shall... Stop there, 15. Stop there. Go back, please, 15. So, it's a two-way thing. You have your own role to play. Your role is, please keep it there. Honor and glorify me. Then he says, call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. The shocking scripture that the Lord led me to is verse 16. Read if you're a Christian. 16, please. Go ahead and read. Are we Bible students? If God does not open your eyes to this thing, ba, you won't see anything. Believe me, revelation is a spirit. If there is no amount of cramming scripture and Bible study that gives you the spirit of revelation, God has to open the eyes of men. But unto the wicked, the word wicked there is not sinners. The idea there is unto those who are determined not to walk with me. He say, what right have you? We're talking about right here. We're talking about a legal access. What right have you to recite my statutes? I shall not die. I shall not die. I, will, I won't be poor. I will be rich. He said, what right have you to recite it? Everyone is talking, just talking. I won't be sick and you are dying. I won't be poor. It's clear you are getting poor. There is a mystery. Confession is a powerful provision but under certain conditions. See, let me tell you something. Half truth can destroy you like a lie. It can do the exact same thing a lie does to you. That's why Satan is not afraid of using half truth. Because it makes no difference to him. He says, what right have you to recite my status? So everyone is confessing. Wealth and riches are in my house. Everyone is confessing. Oh, I can't get into trouble. I, I can't have accident. It's impossible. And you are watching yourself die per second per second. What right have you? What right have you? That's the point you should circle media, not do wicked. What right have you? To recite my status or take my covenant or pledge on your lips talk is cheap brothers and sisters but you see the reason why many believers mock themselves in the presence of the world is we do not understand the systems of the kingdom say the systems of the kingdom so we camp around a dimension of reality and we mock ourselves and the painful part is we are doing what is right but the result is not there because it's not complete God is obsessed with completion. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete. What right have you to be exempted? When there is a plague that is released upon people, what right have you to be exempted? This one is not free. What right? That means... There is an authorization 
based on certain things that are done are we together now what right have you to say a bike will not kill me what right have you to say tomorrow i will still wake up alive you know many made boastful statements like that and they are no more today many have said in the name of jesus if by the end of this year i'm not rich except god has not called me the years have passed nothing has happened exemption is a possibility that can be accessed by the saints exemption exemption the quality of being prevented from experiencing woes the quality of being prevented from experiencing the pain the tragedy of people the quality of being exempted or being taken away from defeat the quality of perpetual triumph not necessarily the quality of not being in trouble but the quality of an assured escape as guaranteed as God himself is there such a provision in the kingdom if yes what are the keys to walking in such a reality I have taught us here again and again that our lives are defined by the mysteries we have access to so two people can walk upon the earth and their experiences will be the same remember the scripture i read to you the problem is never the foundation the problem is never that you are not born again but the quality of our lives the same way you have two students in a class taught by the same teacher so the problem is not the teacher in the same institution so the problem is not the institution under the same condition the problem is not the condition but then their results will differ and sometimes sharply that's how it is in life two believers two individuals two families two personalities can be within the same environment yet their results will differ why because the bible says that you arise and shine only when your light comes the light is available to everyone but those who are interested in accessing it and complying with the conditions and the terms if you're with me say amen, amen. what right have you you are making a boastful statement whereas you are seeing what is happening in this nation and you dare have the gods to say it's your year of triumph what right you're watching kidnapping and assassination happening you're watching you're watching people being poisoned just air killing people you can't sue the air to court you're watching demons sit on people's destinies you hear people tell you they went to bed and look at the testimony of of that dear lady went to bed and woke up with physical marks not spiritual marks physical marks on her body question what what stops you from being a victim i want to ask you a question what if as you are sitting down right now somebody is chanting your name in the shrine you can't stop them from saying it but the question i have is what right do you have to say i will not be a victim of it what rights do you have to claim that you will prosper i'm doing business it's a joke it's a big joke i have an uncle who is rich another big joke the mystery of exemption job 22 verse 19 i'm a student of the bible i love the bible I don't read the Bible to feel spiritual. I am very serious about my work with God and my study of scripture. I have found it to be the most reliable book. I've read many books in my life. It's so disappointing to know many of them are useless to my destiny. And now that I've found the one that is useful, he said, I found your word and I did eat it. 
right and it became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul 29 not 19 job 22 29 i want to share with you a few things from the depth of my heart that can exempt men go ahead and prophesy to yourself as you read this scripture one to read when men like they are saying now across the nations of the earth when men like they are saying now across the continent of africa in nigeria even in this city when men are cast down the bible didn't say they say they are cast they are not confessed it is their reality when men are cast down something you will engage will bring you to a point where for you there will be a lifting up a difference an exemption a separation write this down please everyone it's important to come to the lord's house not just with a bible please always have a bible but always have a good material to write or whatever device you're using but make it serious when you take god seriously he will surprise you when you play games with god and make him look like one of those many things in your life then you will not get results so I'm challenging all of us online, those outside, doesn't matter. When you are coming to the house of God, go as though you are going to be mentored, taught, trained, built, equipped. Don't go as if you are going to a museum to watch, watch artifacts or watch a zoo to watch animals. No, you are going for a life-changing encounter. Are we together? So exemption, write this down. Exemption from evil. Exemption from defeat is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed. Exemption from all of those things I mentioned is a provision in the kingdom that can be accessed. That means it is within the power of God to cause men to experience exemption. But like everything in the kingdom as we have been taught here, everything in the kingdom, including salvation, the cheapest expression of God's grace and love, there will always be a condition attached. Please train yourself into an understanding that every time you desire something in God, know that there is a condition attached. Your condition is a demonstration. Fulfilling that condition is a demonstration of your trust in God and your authorization to commit Him to deliver the results expected. Without condition, there is no guarantee whether you are interested in what God is saying. Watch this if i drop a piece of cake on this table right and i don't give you a condition to pick it how else can i gauge and test whether you are interested i drop it here and say if anyone is interested come and pick it your coming to pick it is a demonstration to me that you are interested are we together you will find people who will not come i don't have to be angry with them they are only sending a message to me that I'm not ready to eat cake. The same way other people are sending messages, I don't want to prosper. I don't want to rise. I don't want to walk in the anointing. I do not want to walk in the fullness of the reality and the possibilities contained in God. Obedience commits God. Obedience, not to what you want. You can't set rules and obey it. You obey the conditions prescribed by God. You can obey the conditions prescribed by a man and still fail. You must obey the conditions prescribed by God. Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son. Son. 
God who in sundry times and diverse manners he spake to us through different people but in these last days among many other things his chiefest means of communication is his son the word that he has appointed to be heir over all things so it is important to trust the word of God don't just believe it trust the word of God and respect the word of God say amen there are conditions that if you and I keep we will render the devil helpless and we'll find out that we can walk in the reality of triumph not as a cliche but an experience that will cause many to wonder and see the hand of God and then give him glory and I want to share with you two deep kingdom mysteries that are responsible for compelling triumph number one is what i call the mystery of putting god first matthew 6 33 the god first principle you can write it like that god dash first principle the god first principle matthew chapter 6 let's start from verse 31 if you will media 31 let's look at 31 god first principle wherefore take no thought other versions say don't worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed 32 for after these things these things what to eat what to wear the house you will get the car you will get listen carefully the children you will have etc your career whatever it says after these things do the heathen the gentiles seek notice the bible never said they get it he said after these things they seek it didn't say after these things they get it's a cause to seek those things because number one seeking them will never give them to you that's not how to get them the gentiles are getting it wrong they are playing by a wrong formula they seek those things and they never get them it looks like they get them but then you look at what else is taken from their life and it doesn't add up to nothing are we together then it says for your heavenly father your earthly father usually will forget that you need these things so God was comforting you. There are many fathers in your life. But the surest one, the dependable, your heavenly father knows. That ye have need of all these things. 33. But seek first. Everybody say seek first. It didn't say seek together. Seek. What does it mean to seek first? If I organize a speech and price. Sam, get ready to stand up. And I say, Sam, you took first. Come out. Do you join him? He comes out alone. Topmost. Preferred. So the Bible says, among the many things. Go back to your seat. Among the many things in your life. I want to marry. I want a job. I want my enemy to die. I, my, I must buy a car. This duplex is mine. I must possess it. I must receive a miracle alert. I'm not saying those things are wrong. He says among them come seek seek isolate god out of the group bring him out and pursue him listen carefully i'm showing you a very deep mystery let me tell you what many of us are doing we are seeking together so we say god come child come civil service where is come we gather them like this and say god just hold my hand but jesus said my burden is easy and my yoke you see that and so god says where do i stand here he said just be be blessed that you are in my life and god says no my jealousy cannot allow me fight with rent fight with whatever you are so obsessed about getting land you will miss a service thinking about land you will never get it that's the secret to high blood pressure are, are you listening to me now 
it is the secret to all this frustration that people drive themselves and fall inside a, a gutter and not even know there are so many things in your life then it says seek first give us that scripture again the kingdom seek first the influence the sovereignty make God first in your life and his righteousness the word righteousness there is not just the one imputed by faith understand his systems amplified says his way of doing things so if you seek the kingdom alone your obedience is still not complete he said rather than looking for money seek to understand principles seek god when you find him and his kingdom pay attention while others are running trying to look for money while others are running trying to look for breakthrough he said stay with god and understand his systems what is your reward how many of these things will come this is jesus talking please tell me how many all he didn't say some then you now use the money you have and get the rest he said if you seek god isolate god and seek him and stay with his word learning the systems of the kingdom not just religiosity bible study just to cram scriptures understanding the systems of the kingdom it leaves you with a guarantee one guarantee that all these things remember that these things of verse 32 what to eat will run after you what to drink will run after you the cars the houses the children instead of flying from pillar to post finding out and say look look i have to do something i'm tired of being buried the bible says seek the kingdom and when you begin to study the systems of the kingdom you will find a mystery that is responsible for fruitfulness it says and when you have found it it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to you do you know why many believers never rise up it's not that we don't read the bible believe me we don't we are not interested in understanding the systems of the kingdom there are many pastors looking for crowd looking for membership yet they will not understand the mystery of growth from the word of god they just they, they run around how are you doing it you how are you doing it like a charm like a genie no sit down there is no man who wanting to to build a tower the bible says who first sit down you know life makes it look like the moment you sit down you are being delayed you you, you get it now so people can come and meet you and say oh god till now you are not working every day you are just searching scriptures look at the foolish person who is talking to you ask him how much is his salary combined you are about to get it now the bible assures you to be added i'm not saying getting a job is wrong but you are settling down no i'm not just interested in a job i'm interested in favor why have i graduated three years and no job because of that i would not just study on a job i will study on favor i'm seeking the kingdom other people are running around and sweating watching football and you are there saying lord how how is it that men rise with favor huh ruth came with her mother mother-in-law and just went to a land with nothing and within 24 hours they left provision for her boas say leave it as you clean some you think it's just because boas liked her there was a mystery a woman who was even begging her mother to give birth to other children and she will wait her desire of maybe 25 30 years was answered in 24 hours and you are searching while you are searching your passion is attracting the holy spirit don't think you will just come foolishly because you no 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 the holy spirit responds to passion and hunger he will watch you reading it like a storybook first that's why you will not see revelation and you say i will not be discouraged i have to find this what happened to abimelech that made him carry gifts and just gave abraham he wanted to carry abraham's wife an angel showed up and said if you you would you are dead he didn't say you would die 
You touch this woman, you are dead. So as a husband, you are now afraid whether they'll kidnap your wife and you go back to scripture and say, instead of running around policing my wife like a fool, let me find out what is the mystery. A kidnapper is coming and that same angel will say, I've been here for a long time. You touch this woman. Don't say it's happening to others. You don't know what they believed. You define your reality by what you believe. I keep saying it. Is when we will go to heaven that God will show me how many goats were slaughtered because of me, how many rams were dragged to another house, how many bottles. Holy God, my picture is everywhere. Somebody will download it and shoot that picture till he injures himself. Ah! When you surround your life with mysteries, you will laugh. You will laugh and laugh and laugh at a foolish devil. You are everything. Everything is, you. everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time, sing it on him. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Listen, do you know Satan has a system? The economy of the devil is such that he's obsessed. Do you know if you work for Satan, you will still not be idle? Satan is the master of occupying people with things. The only difference is that they are useless antichrist and they have no bearing in terms of producing results. The devil will occupy you with issues that will stop you from paying attention. But hear what Jesus tells Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing. How many things? One thing is needful. To sit at the master's feet. Not to sit down and worry. You must be listening and you must be understanding. You know, let me share with you a little testimony. I hardly talk about all these kinds of things. I remember years ago when God was starting out with us. That time, Zaria was not the way it is now. That time there were so many people pastors reverends apostles prophets i mean everybody was called it was it was zaria was on fire everybody was doing something i remember clearly there were some gentlemen who would come and meet me and say man of god why are you always sitting like this you are always writing studying the bible one even offered to sponsor a, a radio program for me he said no at your level i mean you are supposed to organize healing meetings organize this and, and i laughed you know what i was doing i was searching the mysteries of the kingdom i didn't want to gather people and be a fool and waste their time and now be resentful at those having results i knew it would take time brothers and sisters ask those who knew me then i spent my life studying scripture i could sit down a whole day just searching the mysteries you see this hurry hurry in life is a very bad thing god is a god of speed but he does not rush people he teaches you the precepts do you know i say it with all humility over 90 percent of those people today they are not even in ministry they were passionate about fame my god passionate about pas passionate about briefcase and suit the few times i spent with them irritated me you sat down with them in 10 minutes they were talking about their suit i couldn't afford it i could afford to study the word so i stayed on what i could afford god made it cheap enough for me to stay there there were so many people just the, all this fake and false life oh my shoe is this my dad and i just ignored them with all their nonsense and i'm glad i did just like some of you now while others are running god is saying sit down you are saying god for how long god is saying if you knew where i'm taking you you will start rejoicing because one step in knowledge will cover up 10 years of foolishness 10 years of wallowing in trouble you know this money thing god has said it's a year of wealth listen carefully to me money 
most people believe that God cannot bless them they really do that's why they don't listen to him if you were having a job Sam and you were paid let's say hundred thousand how much is that in one year please help me one point assuming nothing changes in 10 years how I was going to say how old is that how how much is that 12 million because of 12 million you rubbish your 10 years rubbish your 10 years fighting quarreling hating and living foolishly whereas God is saying if you will pay attention to me I can do something to you and bring your 10 years to six months to two months to one month to one week and many are ah, God don't just leave me or I know what I'm doing you know for many people the apex of fulfillment is when they get a job so I mean what when you are talking like is it please get out I have a job a good job what is a good job what is your definition of a good job when you are employed my definition of a good job is a good job that I have absolute control of if I cannot control it, it's not a good job. Because somebody's wickedness can affect me. Correct? I'm not saying get a job is bad. No, no, no. We prophesy jobs here. There are many disciplined, diligent, employed people. Don't be lazy and think I'm endorsing you. I'm about to attack you from the other side. You know me. I will have to balance it. Don't think it's not an endorsement for irresponsibility for whatever reason. But I'm, I'm showing you the vanity of trusting in things these are the things that destroy us to an extent that they now give somebody a job every, the devil does it in such a way that every day you go to church or fellowship that's the day you will be needed most that's a useless and nonsense job i repeat that is a useless and what nonsense job the job that has to make you leave god to do it is a stupid job if you are involved leave it now let men insult me no problem leave it listen i've worked with god small he's reliable listen to what i'm telling you are we together now that's why they get angry when god blesses people because they come and say ah, ah, pastor alpha Abba, what happened three cars two duplexes then the painful part is he didn't build any of them. Say, no, this, this is, I mean, I'm, no, I can't, I don't like this guy. Whether you like it or not, it's a mystery. Everybody say mystery. That's why I call it a mystery. A mystery of exemption. That where others have to do a lot of things. I've said it, listen, if you're a businessman here, listen to me. And don't think I'm daft as I speak. Stop wasting your time to save money to buy land in the kingdom you don't buy land through saving you provoke favor listen i know what i'm saying if well god bless you you can you can save and god will honor it i will even pray on it but you are you will be ready for frustration satan that i know will cause something you must eat out of that money no matter how disciplined you are when you are pushed to the wall you must withdraw something you don't get land you don't get properties by saving. Psalm 44 verse 3. Give it to us please. Read that scripture and never forget. It's just a digression and I'll get back to our subject of discussion and we'll pray. I want us to pray tonight. Help us please. Psalm 44 verse 3. You are a Christian. Please read it with all your heart. One, two, read. Uh-huh. So how did they get the land? Now, teach somebody this thing and watch him insult you. And say you and that your stupid man of God in Koinonia. You people should continue this nonsense. You will beg for bread. Beg for bread. See, I'm teaching what I'm teaching some of you is very hard even you you are trying to believe it but what they have told you 
You are now wondering, I hope it will work. It's like leaving a rope. You are about to fall and I'm saying, leave that rope and just come. And you are saying, show me the, the quota and I'm saying, just leave it. If it be thou, bid me come. What I'm sharing, many of you, I can't, you, you see, I'm a spiritual man. I receive a spiritual feedback. I see how many of you are struggling to believe and agree with what I'm saying. It's not like you want to doubt it, but you are saying, ah, apostle is hard though. Some are foolishly saying it's because you are a man of God, you are enjoying. Was I born a man of God? You, you join the junk that journalists carry and talk about people and say you are enjoying. People give you tithe and give you offering. No. I'm showing you how to be happy. That's how to be happy. That you can carry your wife and be happy. You can see a Jimmy and his wife. You can see Ogasho and Shade. There are happy people. You can see Aaron, several Pastor Alpha. There are other angry people. You see them and their wives and stress. That guy is 35. But even you, you would, you would think that he's maybe 50. Life, life squeezed him. Disobedience added his weight on top. And the devil sat on it. That's his destiny. Don't laugh. Take very seriously what I'm telling you. There are people, you see them with their wives happy, giving God glory. Giving God praise. Because they are, they, are, they are accessing the mysteries of the kingdom. They know what to do with their children. They know what to do with the enemy. Kai, may you know what to do. It's a disaster to be confronted with something you do not know what to do. The Bible says, but he himself, Jesus now, knew what to do. Look at the brother that shared the testimony. The one who trekked from um, this is a police station or somewhere. Now you see, can you see that in spite of the trekking, he now climbed a bike and the devil wanted to kill him. It's not fear. It's a mystery. Listen, when you trust God, you commit him. Let me tell you something about believing God. Watch this. If this is the door, watch this. This is a big revelation for someone. Call this place I'm standing the door to your destiny. Are we together? If you turn around following this door with total sincerity, believing that it is God that is leading you, God will remove this door and keep it here to make sure you don't miss it. Let this be a deep word of comfort to somebody. Stop being afraid. Who said he must remain there? He said, I am the door. When he moves, the door moves. So listen, listen. That's why God protected that brother and brought him to hear the word. The devil may have planned. God does not give men doors. He's the door. Once you are following him, I tell you in your sincerity, even in your error, he will still say, I am the door. Pass. I'm no longer... A slave to fear. I am a child. Hold on. When you see God doing the great things that He's doing through my life and through many great men, it's not because we got His instructions 100%, it's because our hearts are sincere. So, while based on what you saw in a vision, I'm supposed to die, God shifts the door and says, Pass. Let the enemies keep prophesying themselves into doom they were right but god was god hmm. did you hear what i said they were right their predictions were correct i shouldn't have made it but god is god choose which part to follow right or god i follow him oh. i follow him are you hearing what i'm saying i don't walk with god with fear since God revealed this to me, I mean, I live a very happy life to hell with Satan. I live a very happy life. My heart for God is the chief requirement. He will take me to the place of destiny. If this is the path God earmarked for me, and I follow this path, but with a heart of sincerity, knowing that I seek God, my sincerity puts pressure on his reputation 
he will change that destiny and carry it and bring it here believe me i have worked with him that's the god we serve that's the god we serve that's the god we serve that's the reason why when a man gives you prophecy it's still not the highest thing you can change it he's speaking based on what he saw but there is something between you and god that can change it have you not heard that there were people who somebody saw a doctor saw that woman had lost a child they saw this guy had lost um, whatever and the man would look and say it is true i'm seeing blood you have lost the child but i bring a sincerity between me and god and after nine months a child comes out where did he come out from i am the door door means access the door to everything don't let men fool you and make it look like you have missed it you have missed it you hear people make that arrogant statement you have missed it miss what god my god you are joking he will navigate that door hear what i'm telling you this is why restoration is possible he can take it and turn the direction and bring it listen he is god he does not submit to any man you be god you know be man no you be god you know be man no alpha and omega you be god you be god oh. you be god oh. sing it one more time tell you a big secret the key is not perfection the key is sincerity learn this it's not hearing God 100% that guarantees your victory is the sincerity of your heart are you hearing what I'm teaching you tonight God first you touch a man addicted to God you are in trouble I'm telling you you touch a man that has carried himself and said, God, I belong to you. I seek you first. When you seek other things and leave God behind, you authorize darkness to tear down your life. When you say it, people think you are stupid. They think it's just a talk for preachers. No, sir. God first. God always. And you are free. The first key to exemption. Hear me. Is when God occupies every space in your life you will watch trouble come before you like this and pass you as if you're a spirit God first it's not about koinonia it's not about being a civil servant or a businessman there are many foolish career people who threw God away they loved God while they were on campus the moment they graduated, they became too matured for God. They threw him away and said, now we have, we have become, you know, I read, I read engineering, I read maths, I read, I read whatever it is. Lower levels of knowledge. They throw God, they throw his word, they throw everything. You never find them talking about God. They are even embarrassed. You come to their house, you mention God, you say you have come with this God, God thing, pastor. Run away from such kind of people. Koinonia, hear me. I love you too much. I'm training you to become a wonder. Run away from anybody who does not prioritize God. I don't care whether he's a politician, whether he's a businessman. If it's your husband or wife, you have a work to do. Start interceding seriously. Do you know, when people come and meet me and they say they are ready to marry, even if you hold hamper for me it's a joke do you love god are you serious you don't bribe me with wine and hamper i'm not an idiot do you love god because when all else fail that one thing will bring you back job lost everything and the one thing left the wife said leave it all job said yeah leave god again i lost everything and you are now saying I should leave God. Why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And God had him. In pain, 
I hold on to you. Oh, I lost my job, but Lord, I hold on to you. How can I lose you? Are we together? My finances crashed, but I hold on to you. God first. The marriage didn't work out. Still God first. The miscarriage happened. God first. I thought I would not need to go for a surgery, but I went for a surgery. God first. Everybody shout God first. Before that brother, God first. Before that sister, let the brother come and meet you loving God. Don't move around and be saying I'm 30 years. Keep quiet. God first. Don't sit down moving around and say, why wouldn't I get a job? Let the job come and meet you with God. Inseparable. How can I leave him? What will be my reason? That he's not faithful. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I, I never, never see, see anyone like you. I never see anyone Please help me praise like my God. I never see anyone like you. 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 I never see anyone like Sit down. Do you know some of you are looking at me strange? As you rise and you see many cheap victories, you will know why we praise God. We gave an instruction here, hold on, that people should dance their way to the next level. There were too many big people, big CEOs, arrogant people who felt too big. Why, why will I make myself a small child? Please, this koinonia, you make people look stupid. The kingdom is for children. When you become too big for the kingdom, you are too big for breakthrough. Too big for what? You think I like dancing? Have you ever seen me dance? Do you think I like dancing? But at his word, you become foolish enough to step into that realm. Are we together? God first. That you vow a vow tonight and say, Lord, listen, brothers and sisters, you know, every time I come here, I watch these little children and their parents. I see how many wrong things they do in 10 minutes. And I see how their parents go. I hear a Jimmy calling his child. The wife is there. Everybody doing all they're doing. And I'm saying, that's it. That's the message. God first. They don't run to me. They run to their parents. God first. We hate God. That's why we run to him last. We claim we love him. The moment people are in trouble, you run to your strongest point of deliverance, which is your uncle. And you ran and he told you the money has not come yet. You insulted him and left angrily. You went to another auntie to an extent that you went to a stranger on the road and said, sir, if I die now, is it fair? And God, hold on. God is watching. We pray in tongues. We roll around. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? We cry we do a lot of emotional things but in the midst of real life situations let me tell you god is my witness you are spiritual people listen the every issue of my life my first point of reference is god i have convinced myself that whatever god cannot do in my life cannot be done more. are we together yeah the moment there is trouble and you are calling apostle it doesn't work. You call prayer department leaders. Doesn't work. Call a Jimmy. Doesn't work. Call pastor. Have a call. They are wicked. No. God is with you in the room there. You don't believe it and you are not even interested. How many people go and sit down in the offices of men from morning till evening? They sit by 7 till 10. Then the man just comes and says, I'm tired. Can you come? Ah, yes, yes, no problem. How can I be angry? Because you think that the man can wipe your tears. And you spend 10 minutes in the presence of God. You are grumbling around and talking nonsense. Oh God, you are my. You now see why I sing that song? And I will never praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. 
listen do you know brothers and sisters if not for god the troubles i would have entered the fulfillment of the prophecies of the enemy koinonia would have crashed crashed like a plane but for god but for god you will keep watching this ministry rise mysteriously like an edifice it's not because of perfection it's because of god when you know this you will be outspoken about god you think your business will rise because you have capital and so you will keep struggling with it there another ignorant person who respects god will come from nowhere and rise that's why you see when listen listen carefully when men are clapping and saying ah apostle did this i thank god for it oh but me and god we 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 know take god out of my life i'm as useless as this table you are seeing in the presence of anyone i'm not ashamed of it i say it everywhere because every time i declare him i bring joy to his heart and he says son you are sitting down on so much power yet you are telling men it's not you most of you will not do it let me tell you there are many of you here looking at me if you carry one tenth of the kind of anointing god has put in my heart pe people will worship you you will put your name on your shoe you will by now they would have made rapper with my face by now you would have done everything but for him how can i dare claim that i'm responsible for this result will i be honest i may deceive you and you will believe me but i know listen after great meetings like this when i go back home i have my small chair i just kneel down and sometimes you just see me hold the chair and i'm just laughing i say kai god boy you self look at how these people are clapping sometimes the seeds that they sow into my life i wait till this my boys that are working for me when they go home i scatter it on the ground and i keep looking at it i say but god you know this thing doesn't belong to me abi it really belongs to you why will somebody walk and you pay someone else and god says it's yours that's your price for believing me god first who deceived you that god is only for preachers who deceived you that god is only for pastors wives please hear me there are people here inside outside online you are not determined to be passionate about god they ask you you say me I, I take my things easy i don't overdo anything you better overdo when it comes to god because life will so crush you into pieces life is spiritual when i worship god i make sure satan sees me worshiping god is a love affair and he's not invited he's absolutely not invited i sing this song not because it's a special number is a revelation to me he is my god the way hope can hold a husband and say my husband you don't claim what is not your own this water is my own right the welfare gave me if you come to touch it now i'll say you are a, you are a what what are you thief thief there is a name for that when you claim he is your god you prove it through your intimacy it's not talk what right have you to stand and say let the power of god move what right have you you know most people think it's just by talking now the power of god will move 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 you are you are a big joker not with god not with god you must have a track record not of perfection of passion believe me if you do not have passion for god forget about doing business with god in this kingdom i want to ask you a question when was the last time you took a day off to spend time with god don't tell me you love him let's examine it you see why it is better for some people to not get jobs because god is having their attention now that they are idle they can spend time but the moment they get up they are now in a hurry making money hurry making whatever and then the times that they now have to spend with god the devil now occupies them with something else don't look for what only god can give it's not missing stay with the door the one who has it and he will give you 
many preachers come to me and they say man of god i want grace i want to see results in my ministry and i look at them i say so what do you expect to happen and they just bring out of a bag you see like four or five different anointing oils and i'm not against it they bring it as a man of god just breathe on it i will carry it back and i look at the person i love i almost want to tell them get out of here you are joking you breathe a relationship is that how you grow your relationship time intimacy spend time with god no spend time with men yes spend time with liars and psychophants who will clap for you now and betray you and betray you unreliable as they are they will clap for you as if they love you as soon as you turn they will stab you listen i stopped trusting men's sins men are as unreliable as the devil i trust god so it doesn't matter what men what they do to me everybody say god first say it, god first bless you let's look at the second part very quickly our time is gone the second mystery that commands exemption aside from putting god first in everything is the mystery of kingdom service write it down the mystery of kingdom service i'm going to be very fast please write it and we'll pray kingdom service is promoting the interest and the purposes of god on earth promoting the interest and the purposes of god on earth it's an extension of your love and your passion for god kingdom service what is kingdom service serving god for a living serving god for a living kingdom service is not just cleaning chairs no 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 serving god for a living there are three dimensions to kingdom service maybe we'll just touch one and then next week we can take the other one i wanted us to finish because we'll start a series let's see how god will help us number one the first proof or the first index to measure your kingdom service is soul winning and establishment soul winning and soul establishment daniel chapter 12 verse 3 soul winning and soul establishment brothers and sisters is a jackpot of breakthrough look at me anybody who tells you working for god does not pay is lying to you and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn how many many to righteousness they shall be as the stars that's their reward for turning many to righteousness soul winning is not for evangelists proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 please give it to us quickly proverbs 11 verse 30 soul winning as a demonstration of your service to the kingdom it says and the fruit of the righteous is as a tree of life and he that winneth souls very clearly he that winneth souls is what wise and the bible speaking about wisdom says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness long lasting riches not 10 years and you are down forever wisdom wisdom that when you win souls it is a service to the kingdom that compels god to bless you second corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20 very interesting scripture second corinthians chapter 5 quickly please verse 18 to 20 the bible tells us that god has given us both the ministry and the word of reconciliation two things both the ministry and all things are of god who had reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and had given us what's the first thing 
is an assignment he didn't give pastors he gave all men the ministry of reconciliation next verse to wit that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and had committed unto us what the word he didn't just give you the ministry he gave you the word what to say how to get men saved not just the passion and the assignment both the ministry and the word look at me one of the biggest secrets to the growth of any flourishing ministry is soul winning not revelation i don't care how deep that ministry is a ministry that trivializes soul winning will never grow go and search your bible search modern history search today i say it without any sense of shame find out a ministry no matter how deep they are in the things of god healing deliverance prophecy revelation whatever if soul winning is not an outspoken priority you never will find god trusting them with people most people think soul winning is a basic thing in christianity it's for people who don't have anything else to offer is that true what jesus died for everybody says soul winning there are some of you who can win souls and win your way out of every trouble you watch people who have not turned to righteousness you watch people you are coming for koinonia you move around and you watch lives and destinies languishing and going to hell and it doesn't bother you because you feel apostle will come and do it your passion for souls there are people here who god has lifted in strange ways they make it as a point of contact to both win souls and draw them to the house of god where they will be saved shortly i'm going to make an altar call and almost everyone who will come out here was invited by somebody you have won a soul let me tell you every time you bring a soul to god as he's getting born again start clapping it's like taking a check to a bank while you are clapping for his eternal salvation clap for yourself too because the devil is watching you have saved the soul and authorized yourself for exemption a woman can win her way out of barrenness that you sit down and say satan you claim you will not give me a child i need three children i will win five souls for every child and you go out and you win five and say that's my firstborn let's see the devil that will stop your womb from taking it if you don't have womb the baby will grow anywhere after all germs grow anywhere fibroid grows anywhere growth grow anywhere it doesn't matter where the baby grows the most important thing is that he comes out after nine months Are we together? Koinonia is heavily protected among other things by the mystery of soul winning. I have passion, genuine passion for souls. Not fake that pastors just do and cry. Genuine passion for souls. You are talking to somebody, he says somebody else has, talk, has spoken to me, say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That somebody spoke to you does not mean you were born again. I'm still talking to you. Koinonia, hear me. I challenge you begin a serious project of soul winning instead of gossiping on facebook discussing matters of people that are not your business writing things about men of god somebody i was i was i was shown somebody who tried to write a, a, some things about me thinking he knows me and i said look at you see this foolish people he would have used that time and that unit to win a soul do you know the joy in the heart of a father when one person comes to stand before jesus listen every time we pray for crowd god sees my heart it is never for a name it is never to build an empire i'm smart enough to know how to be famous i'm intelligent enough to be able to write books souls souls that when you win souls it's on your record the Bible says there is joy in heaven. Since you got born again, let me tell you, it's a shame as a believer. 
if right from the beginning of this year till now you have not contributed in anyone's coming to the kingdom it's a shame you are doing the same thing an irresponsible man does to not bring food to a house the same way we say a man is stupid for not bringing food to his house imagine a man married and comes home empty-handed and the wife is saying honey where's the food he said, food for what that's exactly what someone does if he doesn't win souls you watch people go to hell the primary assignment god has given me is not just to build and equip believers you have to save them first before they are established facebook text messages you can find a way of reaching a soul genuinely don't just say i think he's saved and talk to him and say well you see you have to be serious with god think about it then you go back smiling you didn't save him you only informed him that his life is not going well it's a different thing if he rejects but give people a chance preach to your parents preach to your loved ones you see how we celebrate so winning here many of you when people give testimonies of cars i got a car i got a plane you clap but they say someone got born again somebody just knows oh that's all right let's hear the real testimony which one is the real one the car that will perish have you not grown spiritually enough to know how the the mundanity and the vanity of the things of this life that's why we pray for souls that's why as much as possible as much as god grants us grace we keep making altar calls even if nobody comes let there be a witness in heaven are we together some of you that's what you did that god lifted you that's how this ministry started we would pray for people those times before they got admission when people came that was before they started post ume i remember as soon as people come we are like holding them and the next thing they get born again they get filled with the holy spirit and we create room for them to be established if you heal men and don't save them they are going to hell are you hearing what i'm telling you if you give if i give you money and you are not saved where are you going to don't say heaven don't let anyone lie to you you are going to heaven you are you don't have jesus in your heart please don't let any theologian deceive you you are going straight to hell say hell there is a real place like that people left this morning they are there right now don't let people fool you and make it look as if the moment you're a nice person you go to heaven being nice does not take people to heaven if you cannot live your lifetime you deserve to go to hell if you live your lifetime without acknowledging the one who brought you you spent 70 years of your life and paid no attention to god this night i want to challenge you your phone is full of many names that are not born again you are looking at them and you are watching them god has given you access and influence over their lives many of our loved ones are on their way to hell we know it we know they are on their way to hell our roommates are on their way to hell our work people are on their way to hell our friends your husband is on his way to hell your wife some of our stubborn children are on their way to hell you can start interceding don't say any man cannot be saved that's the talk of the devil i have seen impossible people get saved there's nobody I, I, I don't believe that can be saved. Do you pray for souls? Or do you pray for money? Some of you are surprised. We are supposed to be talking about wealth. I'm showing you a jackpot of financial prosperity. God is not a, a, a journey that you crack like a charm. Souls. For as long as there is breath in me, I will keep leading people to Jesus preacher or no preacher i will make sure they love him i will make sure they love him stop discussing other things with people and don't probe their salvation people come to you and say we want to marry you talk about every other thing there is a way you can discern oh this guy is saved but there's a way you know this brother is not saved and he's about to marry a lady he's inviting satan officially to be the lord of that home you have to save it 
you are not just saving a man you are saving every child that will come you know believers don't be too western to be obedient take the foolishness of the word of god and be serious on tuesday you are coming for prayer department prayer band meeting is the only department that allows other people to join them you come alone you leave and you are going and you know that somebody so he, he may not be born again dear boy can be a starting point it takes a while to save souls you may not save them overnight but start introducing them to the atmosphere of god's presence the same way some of you now introduce someone here doesn't matter what religion doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what rest what, what race i have little respect for any man of god that does not pay attention to the simplicity of soul winning i don't care what you have the greatest people when all is said and done he that winneth souls is wise you have no authorization to prosper and to ex be exempted from the the ills and the perils that will keep languishing men when you are not a soul winner are you blessed we'll stop here next week we'll take on the others but listen to me very carefully tonight one of the many prayers you'll be praying is to cry for grace to have a personal revelation of soul winning i don't want you to just get emotional over what i'm saying you don't have to get tracks and move around it is your lifestyle Huh? there are certain businesses that in Nigeria when the businesses came out people were too grateful to keep quiet they ran to people by themselves have you heard about this ah my life is changing and the person say I'm not listening you must listen I'm not going anywhere I love you too much to leave you that's the same way that's the same way you talk to somebody are we together the person is laughing and says see you and this your god team we did it before we did this god team before and tell him you need to go back god is not a project that you do before and leave many of the people you preach to will tell you they were once saved there was no follow-up system and no structure for establishment so when the cares of life came upon them in anger if god was god why did he allow my wife die if god was god why did he allow me to fail if God was God, why did he allow me to do this? I left God since and they say it. Explain the gospel to them. Let them know that there is a difference between an encounter with God and understanding his principles. Many people think the moment I come to Jesus Christ, everything will change. And be careful how you win souls. The basis of winning souls is not just to prosper them. It's a submission. It's a covenant of surrender and submission. When two people are getting married, they ask them serious questions. Will you be there for one another? Whether things go well or not. They answer yes to everything and they mean it. Don't, don't lie to people. Of course, in Christ, you have access to these things. But train people to love God more than things and situations. Don't, don't make people think immediately I run to God. Everything will change and then an attack starts. On account of their decision and they no longer can stand there are many people who have been of other religions here some of them are here listening to me they have made bold decisions for Jesus and some of them we have had to come in even as a ministry to shield and help them because they they have gone and some are still going through heavy pain they deserted them financially left them for whatever reason but because they were saved well they were saved to love and live for Jesus I love you Jesus I worship and adore you I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything before I make an altar call while everybody is seated I want you to cry pray while you are seated cry to god with every passion in you and say lord i am sorry for ignoring souls i've been trying to do ministry and i've watched people go to hell 
there are people who if i had spoken to them last week last month pray lord you gave me an anointing i've been joking with it just throwing people on the floor and not paying attention to their salvation you gave me a ministry i've been playing games with it watching people look warm and unserious with god brothers and sisters let's be sincere with ourselves that's not how we started that's not how we started with god we started with the simplicity of passion for souls pray talk to god they called you pastor's wife and you were ashamed and you stopped ah they insulted you and embarrassed you and you were ashamed then you stopped outside are you praying lord fresh passion to engage the mysteries that will exempt me from trouble from the grip of witchcraft from destruction that my life will cause men to love god my life will cause men to be on fire how can i be in an environment no one is changing no one is serious no one's prayer life is rising no one's word life is growing never transferred a message to anybody you've never bought a bible for anyone never done anything to contribute to the salvation of anyone you're not acting as a genuine christian believe me brothers and sisters yet you want the anointing yet you want to be invited for crusades do you want the name or do you love god do you want the fame or do you love god do you just want the prestige and the persona or are you genuinely passionate in this place here and now lord your kingdom reign your kingdom reign in our lives in our homes your kingdom reign your kingdom reign through my life through my life i let your kingdom reign your kingdom reign through my life through my life tonight i let your kingdom reign your kingdom Your kingdom reign above all, above all. Your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign above all, above all. Listen, forget about fame and go for souls and watch the wonder god will do with your life forget about complaining for a husband or a wife and go for souls forget about the witchcraft in your family i know you were born with witchcraft i know there are practicing people who are manipulating your destiny leave them alone and go for souls and let me see the charm that will tie you down souls don't just pay tight don't just sow seeds win souls win souls win souls you are too big to win souls you are too big to be exempted you are too big to turn many to righteousness you are too big to receive the defense of god against the vicissitudes of life but apostle i'm a shy person 
that's why there is grace for you but apostle i'm not a man of god the great commission is not for men of god my friend prayer point number two lord every soul appointed to be saved through my life in the name of Jesus, I begin to seek them and pursue them. Every soul appointed. There is somebody that must escape hell because I am alive. Lord, where are they? Reveal them to me and give me the grace to hunt them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. Who have you appointed to be saved through my life? Lord, who have you appointed? To be saved through koinonia who have you appointed to be saved to be serious with god through our teachings jesus said all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition that scriptures may be fulfilled and none is lost and none is lost hallelujah before i make the altar call i want you to take two minutes find somebody that is serious and i want you to intercede for your family members and say i stop them from going to hell lord they can't go to hell i know as at now my father is not yet a christian but lord eternity in hell have mercy pray my brother my husband my wife pray for those who are saved too and are not serious there are people saved but not serious saved but not passionate <laughs> save them oh god we release angels angels of salvation draw them to meetings draw them to crusades draw them to meetings we release angels of salvation lord give them dreams may they have encounters with jesus in their sleep may they have an encounter with jesus in their offices it's time for their salvation hallelujah hallelujah we are rounding up we are going to pray for salvation through encounters that's the strange dimension the spirit of god is moving right now where men by themselves are in a room all of a sudden they are caught up an encounter that will rattle every stubbornness lift your voice and cry lord we release encounters this night dreams this night visions this night encounters in the beer parlor encounters in public places encounters in business board meetings Encounters. While he's preparing to go for armed robbery, encounters on the road, encounters with Jesus. The last prayer point you are going to pray and say lord i have made you first in my life and i'm committed to serving you therefore i invoke exemption upon my life i no longer will cry their cry prophesy it i no longer will go through their pain no 
glorious exemption from poverty glorious exemption from sickness glorious exemption from failure are you praying may that mystery be activated in my life may that mystery be activated surely they will gather but by this mystery they will scatter they will come in one way and the Lord will disperse them in seven ways Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head. I want to speak to you. I prophesy upon everyone here as you are laying your hands, the same way a mark was put by God to Cain and said by this mark you anyone who sees you will leave you in peace he did it to a sinner Cain he put a mark right now in the name of Jesus as you are placing your hand on your head Shadaka Tokatabara I place a mark of exemption upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hear me if the devil is looking for men to kill in a car accident it will not it will be minus you in the name of jesus christ hear me when the devil is fermenting trouble to destroy families cause scandal between husband and wife cause scandal between pastor and whatever in the name of jesus minus you you are exempted in the name of jesus hear me the same way God has exempted this ministry from financial turmoil and recession I pray upon you beginning from this night every time a man is looking for who to favor I command them to find you for this is holy ground will you hear me now this is holy ground, my friend. <laughs> For this is holy ground. Will you hear me now? This is holy ground. For the sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more. Mighty breakthrough coming to this family. Stand up. Lift her up. Bring this guy. It's not supposed to be there, but let me just... let the shofar blow over your destiny i open up those dimensions you have desired i open those strange dimensions step into a new dimension of grace leave him it's done mommy please look at me look at me can we talk to her madam look at me the lord has visited your family tonight please look at me come let me talk to you I'm seeing sickness one sickness two witchcraft this is serious witchcraft over your family huh that's why you keep having the dreams you're having recurrent dreams you're falling inside water they are chasing you and all of these things Jesus died to set you free uh, can you hear me madam Hold on. where is your husband Your finances are tied completely. Tied completely. But I tell you, madam, the major breakthrough that will happen in this family will surprise you. You believe that? I don't know you. I've never seen you. Who is she to you? She's your mother. Come and stand here because 
you have prayed i'm seeing you in a vision praying even for this meeting and you are praying and asking the lord to visit your family and and i tell you the truth mommy salvation comes to your family tonight hold my hands i curse that spirit in the name of jesus ah I see something leaving you that devil of darkness let this family go right now in the name of jesus christ something is coming out from your chest what do you what, what's wrong so i don't know what is that chest is paining me that's what i'm saying because you will think they will go and tell you maybe it's um uh, what do they call it um eh? ulcer or something or maybe diabetes or something uh -uh. they said you have sugar diabetes diabetes hold on let me talk to you that's what they told you in the hospital it's not diabetes this is witchcraft hmm? this is because i'm seeing that one day you will get up and see some your leg will start paining you right you start feeling pain and something will look like a boil then it will start growing mysteriously and it will not heal and they will tell you it's because of diabetes to break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Father, bring salvation to this family. In the name of Jesus, let this captivity end. I pray for you. This dimension of the spirit that you have desired, step into it. In the name of Jesus, there are dimensions of grace. God bless you. I hear the chains falling. Bring her. Hey, I hear the chains falling. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. I cast this spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring her hands. Let her be free in the name of the Lord. Not only deliverance, but impartation of fresh grace to step into new dimensions. And the Lord visiting the finances of the family change their story in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's do something. Our time is gone. I want to talk on two things that the Lord put in my heart and then we'll pray. Number one, I told us that this year God wants us to succeed. Say after me, God wants me to succeed. Say it, God wants me to succeed. My status is changing, it's no more decline, I'm on my way to better days. Oh yes, God is changing everyone's story. Status is changing, there's no more decline, I'm on my way to better days. No matter where your family has been, prophesy it. Status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. The master key to attracting uncommon favor. Please make reference to my teaching, Activating Seasons of Greatness. There I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor. 
And I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families and I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We are going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention is diligence and mastery hallelujah praise the Lord by the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom now we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys have been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please, quickly. Genesis 41, from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37 the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One, to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? 
He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man? If you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that. Verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ. They are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying, just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. 
When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exhort Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 minimum he does the job at his terms the day he coughs the whole company will go bankrupt everybody say mastery is God challenging us when I came in I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office the Bible says you are the light say I am the light you are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me. Influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies. To buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation 
people who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and saying, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy. Called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk, they cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. 
He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing. And make a lot of blunders. And when you step down they say Kai. Ken. Ah. That song. And you say really. You, you see how you are deceiving yourself. We, Our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. 
Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah Katayama. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. 
that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia, he becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. It said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? It said not slothful in business. Diligent. Fervent. Zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competent. When you become competent, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, all of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow, meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much, but competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches 
and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church i already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream i guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor the first person you gave an injection had problem second person had problem that problem before you blame demons we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly but i told you that the biggest problem of africa is blaming demons you can't take demons to court you can't arrest them we we like the fact that they are invisible entities we excuse our failures everything demons you woke up by nine i know it's a spirit that that stops me ha huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are The CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around. You came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent.
Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Kabaraka sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing the fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar the fire does not just fall the anointing falls when you are prepared when you are ready then you become relevant 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 i refuse to be relegated and i refuse you and forbid you from being relegated not just because you are a christian but because you do not have what to offer hallelujah my younger brother very brilliant gentleman 
when he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I found my servant. And with my holy oil have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave. You become a city that is set on a hill. That cannot. Cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark. For the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service. This is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is. It's raining, raining. Let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places. To come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah uh, is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. 
that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace Lord you want to change our stories in this season we make room we make room we make room we make room we reject the spirit of laziness Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. 
insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one, two, three. Shake those devils 
I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God, I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Listen, some of you, this change has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, May those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. Break it, take it, break 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 it, 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 from every chain, I break free chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains, chains of stagnation. <laughs> I Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 it, take
Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus that blood opens the gates of captivity. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. 
Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen, he said, We see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low so there is dwindling that stability in the spirit is not there that's all this mama is not fake because i'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing very powerfully come madam come let's pray to the king you have taken all the glory you have taken hold hands both of you I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. 
Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there is. Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is, there is, a, there is somebody. At, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. Know. You don't know. Yes. You I love God. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not. Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Let's... Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. Oh, to break every chain, break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? 
Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. Now they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cuffed the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. You know, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made that me yours. Please bring out.
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing so you must focus don't be distracted don't be distracted hallelujah elijah said if you can see me don't don't be distracted please hallelujah please pass your request ushers let's hurry up please get them to the aisle just pass it to the last person the last person by the side please help the ushers inside and outside it's not a ritual there is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place please begin to pray in tongues as you do that please everywhere begin to pray in tongues all those connecting with us online it's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala la bala. Hey, se mara na na mosuri na 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 mas. Hey, shapra pakata bala la bala. Rakata prato shupre kiri bala la bala. Hey, shabara la 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 bala. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer with all flesh Blessed Lord, let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hitherto, we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord, the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls, calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear. I cause fear. I cause fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb mazuka parata teleka in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place, help her please. It's time for you to catch this thing for real. It's yours for the taking. Listen, I want to pray. As I stretch my hands and pray, inside and outside, wherever you are, you must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatikalai lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus I release it from the depths of my heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, everywhere you go, may honor follow you. And I declare these hands that are lifted, like Aaron, like Joshua, lifted up the hands of his servant Moses. I command, may those hands never go down. May the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down. And I pray for marriages supernaturally. May God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members, no matter where they are. I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside, don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin, I denounce Satan, and I receive eternal life into my spirit. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life, and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I cause it right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.